Hello artists! Today, Emmy Lou the Art Dog and I are going to teach you about texture. It's one of the elements of design. We're going to move on from Peter H. Reynolds because I only own three of his wonderful books. However, I'm going to do a little research because I suspect he has some more books that might work for our Art at Home series. And if I can find some more and order them, then we can do some more Peter H. Reynolds too because his books are awfully splendid. Before we start on texture, I want to go back to something we talked about a couple lessons ago. Building sculpture out of recycled items. This is my trusty little tugboat and I wanted to teach you a little trick that I didn't teach you before. Here's the boat, here's the cargo. Let's say I want to put something like this onto here. A really good way to do that is to cut tabs and it will stay without falling. And you might not care if it falls, if you don't want to play with it, it doesn't matter. But if you want to move it around, it's going to need to be a little stable. So this is called tabbing. It also requires way less tape, too. Because we have to, we can't just run to the store anytime we run out of something. So we need to be careful with our tape, right? Just use little pieces. This will help you, your tape lasts a lot longer. And another way to use tape I can't tab this plastic container because it's, I can't cut through it. You can take your tape and do this and make like a circle, okay? Do this, then when you stick it down, it'll stay. So there you go, there's my tugboat. I hope you're continuing to make things with your recycled items because it's a really fun, easy way to do it. So let's talk a little bit about the elements of design. They are line, shape, space, value, and texture. Today we're going to explore texture, which is just how somebody, how something feels. Does it feel bumpy, smooth, silky, sandy? That's texture. And I'm going to show you this book. I'm not going to read it. It has a lot, a lot, a lot of words, and that would make my lesson really long and probably boring. But I am going to show you the picture, because the, the pictures, because they're all made by rubbing. So here, the artist cut a pear in half, put a piece of paper on top of the pear, took a flat crayon like this with no paper, and rubbed it. And now you see the images. It's another kind of art magic in a way. So here we have some leaf rubbings. Here we have a shell. Here's the bumpy side. Here's the inside. Turned over. Grass flowers and leaves. So you see, you can find things outside and bring them in and use them for artwork too. Here we have a bunch of coins, feathers, corn. This is a tree and some lichen and the artist used a different color when they rubbed the lichen. Pine needles. Apples and some buttons. String. Paper clips. There you have it. The whole book is illustrated with rubbings. Now you can go on a texture hunt in your house if if it's okay with your folks. When I teach this at school, we actually walk around the school with our paper and a crayon and collect textures. So I'm going to show you how to do rubbings right here on my art table. And I'm going to bring my paper to a surface so you can see both methods, okay? But I want to make it easy on my cameraman here and not make him follow me all over the house because that would be a drag. So last night, I peeled a whole bunch of crayons, okay? I didn't want to make you have to watch me peel crayons today. That would be boring and annoying. And watch how I do this. So I'm looking at this speaker over here and I'm thinking, hey, maybe that could be cool. Let's try it. First of all, I want to try to get the words. See if they come out. Oh, there they are. That's awesome. Now let's see if the grill cloth shows up. And you'll learn that when you're pulling a texture, sometimes going one way works better than the other way. And sometimes you pick up a different texture when you go the other way. Depends on what kind of texture you have. So there you go. Okay, now let's go over here and see what we can do 
at the art table. Okay, so here I have some tile left over from a tile project. I'm willing to bet that'll work. And darker colors show up better than lighter colors. But for the second step, when we paint, the lighter colors can show up really well if you put a dark paint on top. So I'm not saying you can't use it. I'm not saying that at all. And I'm wondering, can I do the same piece with two colors? Sure can. And that gives me another idea. I'm wondering, what would happen if I start to layer something? Let's check it out. So, I'm going to take this stir stick. I'm going to try to do the same item more than once and see what happens. I used to do a lot of rubbings and paint over them. I went through kind of a phase. Because once I started, I couldn't stop. I just kind of saw texture everywhere. I went a little texture crazy. See, look at that. That looks pretty cool, huh? Let's try a slide. You can make very cool sounds on the guitar with a slide. Well, my husband can, I can't. I don't play the guitar, but he plays a killer guitar. And, ooh, yeah, that's cool. That is cool. I love this. Some of you are going to notice I'm making a pattern, right? Stir stick slide, stir stick slide, stir stick slide. You can do all kinds of things. It's like any other way of creating art. Once you start, you'll find you get 10 or 20 ideas, and then you'll be like, Shazam! I'm a texture machine. Let's try these jaw harps. I bet you that'll be cool. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, that is nice. Let's try the bigger one. Cool. Let's try another one. Super duper. See what I mean? The more you do it, the more you want to do it. Very, very cool. Super fun way to work. And kind of unique. You don't see you don't see a lot of artists who work this way. I'm not really sure why. It's kind of not a very common art form, but it's really, really fun. Let's try a putty knife. Make sure when you start out, you get permission from your folks. I don't want you to try to rub things that are fragile or really special or that type of thing, okay? so. Make sure everything that you decide to try rubbing, the grown-ups in your life say it's okay to use. All right? That's important. Now we're going to skip ahead. You know me, I always take shortcuts when I do demos to give you more time to work. The next step, if you wish, you don't have to. Remember, all of our art at home is up to you. You can use whatever supplies you have. You can approach it any way you want to. Here's one that I painted, and that's another choice if you wish. So, it'll usually turn out better if you think of colors that are opposite each other. Like red is a warm color, so I think the paint will show up if I use a cool color on top of the red better. If I used just plain red on red, the texture won't show up as much. Now, you might want that look. If you want a more subtle look, that's perfectly fine. But if you want the rubbing to show up, you're going to want to do warm, cool, warm, cool. All right? And the reason this works, it's the same reason our Cray Pot Resist worked yesterday. Um, wax and water cannot mix. So the wax in the crayon will repel the water in the watercolor. Yesterday, when we did our Crepa Resist for Sky Color, the oil in the Crepa repels 
the water in the watercolor, okay? So the color that's going to show up quite well is black, unless of course you're painting on black, then it won't show up. In which case you'd want to use a lighter color like yellow or red. But here the black's going to show up really, really well, okay? So get creative. If it's okay with your grown-ups, go out in your yard, maybe collect some leaves or plants. Walk around the house, ask your grown-ups which items you're allowed to work on, assemble your supplies, and have fun. The most annoying part, I think, is peeling the crayons. Until next time, boys and girls, I miss you. Happy art!